I'm going to run you through some quick steps for using the X-Rite color checker, both the full size color checker, this is the video version, and I'm also going to have a quick look at the passport version, which gives you basically the same information with an additional focus checker um, in a nice handy hard shell for carrying around with you, slipping in a pocket. No excuse not to have it with you when you've got one that size as well. What we're going to talk about first of all is white balancing with these charts. This is a spectrally flat grey. Now what that means is as the light hits it, all frequencies are reflected from it. So in other words, it doesn't absorb any frequencies of light as it gets hit. So you get an accurate interpretation of the colour that's hitting your subject. And in fact, that's the second point. It should be where your subject is. I'm the subject for this, so it's where I am. Um, it can be very tempting to move these right over to where the camera is, but the light over there is completely different from the light here. And there's a couple of different tricks that you can use to balance this, both in camera and once you get back home and in your edit suite. So we're going to look at how we can do that in post in a um, later part of this video. But right now, a quick tip for in camera, you can manually adjust your white balance in pretty much any camera. You can set the Kelvin to pretty much where you want it to be. But I prefer to take samples and do a, a, a manual balance. You point it at a grey target and you tell it to sample from that. The focus side of this, by the way, is pretty straightforward. Stick it where your subject is. If it's a person, I'd always recommend focusing on their eyes. So it's a good idea to have this right next to uh, their face so that you can check that the focus is accurate where their eyes are. Um, and because of the converging lines here, it's actually incredibly easy to tell when it's in or out of focus. Another really nice feature of this chart is the 90 IRE white, 40 IRE grey and 20 IRE dark grey chips on the front that allow you in conjunction with zebras being set to 90% in camera to quickly judge when your image is perfectly exposed. So those are some tips for using these charts within the production process. So actually they're on set or wherever you may be. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go across into our editing suite. We're going to take our footage. We're going to look at how these charts are um, useful once we get inside the computer, how we can push and pull our colors around and our contrast around to get the most balanced and, and accurate image that we can. OK, so I'm just going to launch Final Cut Pro 10. I'm going to open up my scopes with Command 7 and I'm also going to open up my color correction tools using Command 6. I'm going to change over to the RGB Parade and I'm just going to check that the parts of the scope that relate to the grey chart are all in alignment. There's slightly more blue, so I'm actually going to just move my mid-tone um, control across to blue and then just bring that down a bit so that they are perfectly aligned with each other. They're the same height, in other words, there's no colour dominance. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip to the colour chart side of this. So that's got the colour chips on it and the large exposure chips on there. And I'm going to flick over to my Luma waveform. The large chips make it easy to see the black chip at the bottom. And I want that to be at the bottom of my scope. So at zero IRE, that's where black should live. So I pull that down using the exposure part of my colour correction tools. I push the gamma, so that's the mid-tones, just up a little bit to try and get the 18% grey to appear. That's the second chip down from the top in the middle. To get that to appear around about the sort of 40, 35 to 40% point on my scopes. I'm now going to zoom in. I'm just going to check the saturation. So I have the saturated chips on the left-hand side of the chart, right-hand side of screen. And those should be falling about halfway along the, the vector scope. So if you want something to easily judge it against, you can use the flesh tone line that travels up along this line here. So I'm just going to add in saturation until those spikes of saturation on the red, green, magenta, blue, yellow and cyan chips are about 50% saturated. Now another thing I can do is I can use a colour mask to sample my skin tones and check that they are in alignment with the skin tone chips on the chart. 
Now, what I can do is I can click the View Masks button and that will turn it into a black and white mask. And then it makes it much easier for me to tell whether or not they are selected together. And you can see here that the skin tone chips and my face are white. That means that they are equally selected, which means they fall within the same range. They are selected together. That means my skin tones match the skin tone references on the chart. In other words, I've got perfect skin tones, a nice balanced image, saturation where I want it, and I've got a lovely balanced image ready to work from.